Life seemed to wash over my mother after my dad died. She accepted things the way they were, except when it came to me. She never took chances with her own life. She was too busy running mine. She never followed her own dreams. She was too busy creating new ones for me. It's not easy to raise a child alone, but she did it with a kind of solitary passion. She even settled for a relationship with a man who had a life separate from ours. She stayed with him because of what he could provide, what it allowed us to afford. I had ballet lessons because she never did. I had voice lessons because she couldn't sing. I had piano lessons because she thought all well-brought-up little girls did. She was, above all, determined that I would never have to settle for second best, the way she had. And that included going to a first-rate college. I was finally on my own, making my own choices, my own friends, including one who would change my life, my best friend, Harry. Economic sanctions when this university is so heavily invested in South Africa. If that's true, then we should petition the Board of Trustees. Yeah. Until this university pulls out every last penny invested in South Africa, then rallies like this are just a pathetic entertainment for spoiled rich kids. Rallies if the politics like turns you on, I can be very political. Give me a petition! Harry, Free Nelson Mandela! No, we're not all a bunch of spoiled rich kids. Is that right? Yeah, there's some of us here who are committed to change. So why don't you come to one of our meetings? Bring Nelson Mandela! I thought I'd find you here. Hi. Saturday night, all alone, still studying. What's that? Well, I hope you like vegetarian with sausage. If you knew that covers all the bases. I love pizza. Mm. For years, I thought it was one of the five basic food groups. My mother never let me eat it. She was always suspicious of anything with sauce. Sauce phobic. <laughs> hey, you know, you never talk about your parents. Why? What are they like? My mom died when I was four. Hmm. Sorry. My dad died in Vietnam before I was born. My mom raised me by herself. Well, I hardly ever see my dad. I think the last real conversation we had was when I was 11. All right, come on. I'm serious. Anyway, you definitely wouldn't like him. I'm sure he's invested in South Africa. I mean, he is everywhere else. But seriously, you know, he calls me once a month and he asks me how much money I need. And I tell him and he tells me to take care of myself. You know, very deep conversations. Wow. I'd give anything for a 45-second conversation with my mom. She's always bugging me to go out and meet someone nice. Like Yale McBee? <sighs> What's wrong with Yale? Oh, come on. I mean, this guy, he is like a total throwback. He's walking around here like it's Berkeley 1969, you know, and his cool coffee house, black duds, you know, very moody. Oh, what, you think he'd be more effective politically if he dressed like a, a yuppie? A yuppie? God, you say that like it was a crime. Well, it is. Does this mean you don't want the cappuccino maker I got you for your birthday? <gasps> you got me a cappuccino maker? 
I can still return it, you know, I have the receipt. It's right. <laughs> I need you next week, Tana. What for? We're meeting at my place on Thursday around 8. We'll go from there. What are you going to do? Demand President Huxley divest the university of all its South African assets. <laughs> You're right. You're going to hold a gun to his head? If that's what it takes. We're going to his house. You won't get past the front door. I'll have you arrested. Would that bother you? I thought you were different. I'll be there. So, have you met someone nice? Not as nice as your boss. Tana, please, I'm at work. Tonight? Every time I call, you're always too busy to talk. Well, I'm sorry, Mom. I've really, I, I've really got to go. I'll call you later, I promise. Bye. Bye. When you have time, who's that on the phone? Tana. She finally called back after I left two messages at her dorm. You mustn't let your children rule your life, Jean. I can't help it. I'm worried about her. Oh, man, I should have left an hour ago. What are you talking? You can't go. I know. Because you've got like 200 pages to read, and I have 400. No, that's your problem. Donna, if you go, I'm going to fail English. Oh, I'd be wimping out. What? What are you talking about? Yale is a total psycho. If I don't go, Prince was right about it. No, it doesn't. He's manipulating you. I'm going. All right, fine. I'm going, too. Student organizer Yale McBee was arrested this evening for allegedly setting a car bomb that exploded and narrowly missed killing University President Huxley's two small children. Seven other students, along with McBee, were taken into custody on charges of attempted murder, assault, and various weaponry charges. I'll have more details on this later. Back to you in the studio, Kim. Tana? Tana! Come on. I wasn't expecting you till tomorrow. Yeah, well, here I am. You cut your hair. Well, why did you do that? Well, I guess you don't like it, huh? Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. That's all. I mean, you never mentioned it. Well, well, let me see. Let me see. It's very cute. It looks good. I like it. Oh, I'm so glad to have you home. <clears throat> hey, how were exams, huh? They were okay. Good. You're all dressed up. Yes, uh, Arthur's taking me out to dinner. Well, why don't you come with us? Where's his wife? She's back in the rehab clinic. So she's drinking again, huh? Well, Arthur's afraid if he asks her for a divorce now, I mean, she'll just fall apart completely. Well, it's always something, isn't it? I really do wish you would try to remember all the wonderful things that Arthur has made possible for us. I mean, all the lessons, getting you into private school... Uh, his son, Billy, has invited you to a party up there this weekend. Why? Come on, honey. I mean, you might meet somebody nice. <laughs> One of Billy's friends? I don't think so, Mom. Well, they go to Harvard, Yale, Princeton. It's not such a bad crowd. He treats me like the hired help. Tana, that's an exaggeration. Oh, come on, it's a party, for heaven's sakes. <sighs> it would mean a lot to me if you would go. And I even bought you a new dress.
down the hall. That one? Yeah. You're such a tease. That's really very funny. Can I please just get it? Let. Ow! No! No! Get it off! Come on, baby. Relax and enjoy it. I'm so glad you called, Arthur. I was beginning to worry. Oh, wait. Oh, good. Uh, she's here now. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Tana? Arthur called. He said the party got out of hand a little bit. My God. What happened to you? Ask Billy. What? Now, Billy told Arthur that you were drinking, honey, and that he had to call a cab for you. But that's just not what happened. I went to find my ride. And Billy took me into this bedroom. He raped me. I tried to make him stop, but I couldn't. I couldn't. Oh, God. Oh, my God. But, I mean, I've known Billy all of his life. Wait a minute. You said you went into a bedroom with him? <gasps> Billy raped me, Mom. Tana, that is a terrible thing to say, especially about Arthur's son. But I'm your daughter. <sighs> It's okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. <gasps> Did you tell anyone? No. All right. We won't ever talk about this again. Not ever. And we didn't talk about it. In its place grew a silence so deep no one could penetrate it. I returned to school. I went to classes. Everything looked normal. But nothing felt right. I like this drop this one. Good. Okay. <laughs> It's not bad. You just might want to get it out a little further. Yeah, right. Wow, you're really into this, aren't you? Yeah. I could stare at a stream for hours. Zen-like. Searching for that near-perfect fish. I'm wasting all my real talent in college. <laughs> hey, Harry, I'm, uh... I think about going to law school. What do you think? I want to make a difference, you know, like, like Miriam Blake. She says they need young people with strong principles in the government, you know? Yeah, well, I think you should probably go into private practice. You can make a half a million a year easy. Right, helping fat corporate cats buy their way out of the system is not my idea of a good time. Wait, did you just say fat corporate cats? Yeah. God, Tana, you are so 60s. And, and I really like that decade. What? It's not you, Harry. It's just... Well, then what? I, I can't. I can't.
can't explain it. Well, try. Why, why can't we go back to the way it was before, you know, when we were just friends? Donna, men, men and women can't ever just be friends. Why not? Because this doesn't work that way. We're two totally different species. I mean, come on, I mean, our shirts don't even button on the same side. I need you, no, 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 Harry. don't do that smile stuff with me. You just broke my heart, and I can't... I should at least be able to hate you for a little while. We stayed best friends all through college. I went to law school at Bolt and Harry went to Harvard. Our phone bills were almost as high as the tuition. So many times I started to tell him what had happened to me that summer. But the words stuck and so did the anger. My feelings became the fuel for my drive to succeed. After graduation, I went to work as a deputy DA in San Francisco. Six months later, Harry followed me there, going into a private practice at a prestigious law firm, and just in time to help me celebrate my birthday. Happy birthday, girl. Oh, look, is Harry here? Uh, no. Oh, guys, this is so very nice. You didn't have to. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Jeffries has not called me back. Has he called you? Tana, it's your birthday. Relax. In fact, take the rest of the day off. Lindsay, no, I can't do that. Go someplace, have fun. Give the rest of us a break. We can't keep up with you. Am I late? Just a little. Oh, sorry. I love this office. It's uh, very nice. Mm -hmm. You know, to be a prosecutor, you have to be very tough and edgy. Harry. It's ripe with possibilities. Below. Well, I think you'll enjoy the restaurant that I picked out. Okay. Tana. Yeah. You need to sign this before you leave. Okay. Uh, if there's anything else, you know where we are, and I'll be back at two, okay? Great. Thanks. <clears throat> is that new? Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> An engagement ring, maybe? What? It's been over a year since his wife died. He hasn't asked you yet, has he? Uh, Tana, I didn't uh, get you a birthday present because I thought it would be much more fun if we went out shopping and, and picked something out together. Uh, I'd love to go shopping with you, Mom, but I can't. I've got a big murder case that starts on Monday, so... All you do is work. I just wish you were a little closer to achieving some of your goals. <laughs> My what? Home, family, a position. Whose goals are those? We, we don't want the same things. I am not like you. I never wanted you to be like me. Well, now there's something we can agree on. She ended up turning the conversation totally around, and we ended up fighting about the fact that I'm still single. And she's the one who wants to get married, not me. She's right, you should get married. You know, there's a Buddhist temple around the corner if you want to go for it. Very, very funny. Did you go out last night? Of course, did you? No. Oh, come on. I mean, if not me, at least give someone a chance. Oh, look at the freezes. Oh, please. We're not talking about flowers. All right. Look, just stay off my back. You know, having my mother in town is bad enough. I need to hear it from you, too. Oh, yes, you do, because it's what keeps you on your toes. You with Stop hey. Don't be stupid. Just give the lady back her purse, all right? We can all walk out of here. I've got this. I make the rules. Okay. All right, just, just relax, okay? Look, take what you want. Just don't hurt us, okay? Here. Here.
Outside while I roll the frame. It's a little awkward with all the tubes. Um, no, I'll stay. Okay. The bullet is lodged between the 11th and 12th thoracic vertebrae, midway between the neck and the tailbone. Oh, Harry said you're not going to operate. I wouldn't want to tear him up any more than he already is. As it is, part of his nervous system still seems to be functioning. He's very lucky. Could have been much worse. Um, is the paralysis permanent? Yes. How could it be worse than that? He could have died. Excuse me. shot to help him sleep. You and Harry, are you, are you very close? Yeah. I am. Um, I was there. I'm sorry, I've been here all night. How does he seem to you? I don't know. I, I think he's still in shock. for a bit if you uh maybe you should go home and get some rest i don't think i could sleep but um i guess i could change because yeah i'm a mess so i tried to get off the Paris. I'm going to bring you up a little bit higher, and after you can sit up, I will teach you how to get out of bed. What for? 
Well, what did you do before? What do you mean? You know, for fun. For fun? Mm -hmm. Chase women. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, before you can have a woman in your bed, you have to learn how to get out of it. Well, how about you, Avril? You want to get in here with me? <laughs> You'd have to catch me first. Hi. Hello. Okay, just a little bit more. Yeah, be careful. This thing's really turning me on. Mm, is he always so perverse? Oh, always. He comes by it naturally. Almost there. No, stop. Stop! I feel like I'm going to throw up. It's okay. Everybody gets dizzy at first. But I promise by the end of the week, you'll be sitting up with no problem. Who cares? I can see the TV just fine from here. We'll try it again later. You think we could turn off the TV for a while? Why? I don't know. It's not good for you. You can only watch so much hard copy. He's right here. What is that, Beethoven? Yeah. I thought it might make you feel better. How? I don't know. Uh, I think it has a kind of a, a healing quality. What exactly are we going to heal, Dad? Harry. No, I mean, you think Beethoven's going to make me walk again? All right, Harry, cool it. No, neither of you get it, do you? I don't have control over anything that happens to me. What I eat, what drugs I take, when I go to the bathroom. I mean, I could be sitting here in my own waist and I wouldn't even know it. The only thing I have control over is this. So why don't you just turn off the music and leave me alone? Up to 40 miles per hour. The temperature dropping from 59 degrees this afternoon. Cloudy and continuing windy overnight with a low of 47. Cloudy with a few sunny breaks and not as warm tomorrow with a high. He is so mad. Yeah. Well, if being pissed at me gets him through this, I don't mind. I have enough guilt to oblige him. <laughs> you know, you're different than I thought you'd be. I can imagine. I know how Harry feels about me. <laughs> um, I'll have a coffee, please. Two. What happened between the two of you, anyway? <sighs> Harry blamed me for his mother's death. Why? Because I was away on business the night she overdosed on pills. Why would he blame you for that? I guess he felt like I deserted them both. Because you were away on business? That will be two dollars. I got it. Thank you. Thanks. I should have been there. She had cancer. Her doctors told her to put her affairs in order. She knew what it meant. That's awful. I, on the other hand, was in denial. Then she died. I let Harry push me away. But he was just a kid. I wasn't much of a father. I put him in boarding school when he was eight. By the time I tried to make up for it, it was too late. Well, I think you should say something. Tell him how you feel. Isn't that like putting a Band-Aid on a tumor? Why? Well, you gotta start somewhere. Harry needs you. Don't you think it's self-serving to be asking for forgiveness at this point? Then why are you telling me? So what do we have? An eyewitness who saw Barrows drag the victim across the parking lot. A doctor who will testify that the bruises and contusions she suffered are consistent with rape. What about the DNA match on the sperm? Oh, the lab screwed up. Oh, damn. I know, I know. But I think we can get a conviction on her testimony alone. She's a very compelling witness. Will you have Andrew sign this place? Thanks. Lead him to assault and battery. What, because the lab screwed up or uh, because your calendar's too full? I won't spend time or money trying a case that I can't win. Well, that's a hell of a manifesto, Counselor. Want to explain it to the victim? I didn't say I felt good about it.
tired? Yeah, it's been a tough week. Yeah. Leaving Harry alone has become the hardest part of the day for me. Yeah, me too. You know, there's um, there's a, a, a church nearby that I go to sometimes to listen to the organist practice. Would you like to? I'd love to. Okay. I'll file the papers in the morning. Judge Thompson will set sentencing. 18 months? That's it? Unfortunately, Hi, baby. How's it going? We could get. You said I wouldn't have Get him out of here! Get um, out of here! Come on, down the hall. This way. Let's go. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Why did you plead bargain? I mean, if we had gone to trial, there is a good chance that he would have gotten off scot-free. The jury would have believed me. Why didn't you? I'm sorry. We did the best we could. How did Harry seem to you today? I, I don't know. I'm... You okay? Yeah, I'm just a little upset. About what? There was this run-in at the office today between a, a rape victim and this guy who is such absolute scum. I and mean, there's no doubt in anybody's mind, you know, that he did it, that he's guilty. And, and I plea bargained him because I didn't think I could get a conviction in open court. It happens. You should have seen her face. I knew that because of what he had done, her life had stopped. You don't know that. Yeah, I do. You know, I'm too upset to go back to work. I'm, uh... Would you like a ride home? Yeah, that would be very nice. She blamed me, and she was right. You know, you shouldn't be so hard on yourself. I'm a prosecutor, and I should have acted like one. Tana, what's really going on here? I would... <laughs> wow, this is hard. I know what she's going through because I went through it. I was raped. And it was a long time ago. It was in college. I'm so sorry. No, it was such a mess. I, I was just a kid, you know, and I was still a virgin. And the guy's father was my mother's boss. And her lover. And she didn't believe me. So I never reported it, and there was no trial. so stupid and insignificant. I've never told anyone about this before. Not even... Not even Harry. Go. 
Are you gonna be at the hospital tomorrow morning? I'll see you then. I don't want anyone to get hurt, especially Harry. I know. right here. Cool. Did you see the paper today? No. Oh, man. Page two of the Metro section. Your old boyfriend, Yale McBee, was arrested again. Oh, come on. No way. Now what did he do? He robbed a bank. Get out of here. I'm serious. Oh, gee. Just think you could have played Bonnie to his Clyde. You're right. Great. Thanks for reminding me. What? Oh. The door. <laughs> Thanks. And... Cool. How oh, sorry. What, um... Yeah, 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 I got it. Okay. Great. You all right? Just... Yeah, yeah, just a little nervous. Well, of course you are. You know, it's your first weekend away, and... Okay. That's good, I got it. I asked Dad to join us at the lodge. You did? It's not what you think. This could be the last weekend before he goes home. He's done his part. Whatever I need now, I'll get it Vallejo. So you're gonna do it? It's not like I really have a choice. I don't want to do this on my own. Cool. Thank you. Woo, you're in! I started out wanting to bridge the gap between father and son. Instead, I found myself uncomfortably in the middle. And what I hated most was keeping secrets from Harry. Nice one. Yeah, considering I'm three feet shorter than I used to be. No way. Unbelievable. <laughs> You've got one. I can't. Oh, he's tiny. Get out of here. Okay, you got it? Got it. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Wow. What a beautiful fish. <gasps> it's one of the most beautiful fish I ever caught. <laughs> uh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> I can still do it. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was going to feel the same. Yeah. You know, I see everything differently now because people see me so differently. Not everyone, I don't. It doesn't make any difference to you that I'm like this? Yeah, of course it makes a difference. I hate how this has changed your life. But it hasn't changed how I feel about you. Harry, the, oh, there's something I gotta tell you. Wait, wait, there's something I want to say to you just before I lose my nerve. Hunt. That first night in the hospital, I really, I really thought I was gonna die. And I didn't, I didn't understand what I was missing until I thought my life was almost over. I mean, I, I see everything so clearly now. I love you. I mean, I think I've always been in love with you. Harry. Can you love me? I do love you. Just not the way that you want me to. Look, we have been all through this before, you know. Yeah, that was years ago. Things change. I'm sorry, Harry. I had it. You know what your problem is? You put way too much stock in friendship. I think this time I get to hate you for a little while.
Hey, have you been fishing? Did you catch anything? Not exactly. How was the drive down? Oh, it was okay once I got outside the city. Um, Harry, we should change the dinner reservations because I only made them for two. Fine, I'll take care of it. We have to talk. Well, did you say something to him? No. And I'm not going to, and neither are you. Well, they can't seat us in the dining room until 8, but we can get a drink at the bar. Well, you two go on. I'm going to shower and change before dinner, okay? All right. I get you. Ah, oh, I'll have a scotch neat. Two, please. Should you be drinking scotch? Oh, come on. Are you going to tell me what I can and can't drink? Have a double. Have a double? What does that mean? Harry, I'm trying here. Oh, really? Well, it's a little late, don't you think? <sighs> Look, Dad, it's not you. You're just, you're just a victim of proximity. What's that supposed to mean? Well, it's always pretty convenient to be mad at you. And every time I screw up, I can blame you. That always works. Yeah, being mad at you's got me through a lot of stuff. What's it gonna get you through this time? A broken heart. I mean, you'd think by now I'd realize that she just isn't interested in me. You're in love with Tana. as much as I do. I just wish we... I know. Hi, Mom. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just making some dinner. Well, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, Arthur proposed last night. We're getting married. Well, congratulations, Mom. That's great. I know how you've always wanted this. Wow. Um, so are the two of you going to go off by yourself somewhere and tie the knot? Oh, no. No, no, we're going to have a big wedding at the house with the whole family. Wow, well, that's nice. That's... Oh, my God, Mom. Um, I think something's burning. I, I, I'm going to have to call you later, okay? Okay, bye. Bye. Hi. 
sorry. Um, is there any chance that you're through hating me for a while? Because I could really use a best friend right about now. Please. Bride and groom. Yeah. Try to be happy for him. Okay, try to pretend to be happy. It's just so pathetic. She spent 20 years waiting for him. And now he decides to marry her because he's afraid of getting old and sick and he wants to make sure she's there to take care of him. You always cut right to the romantic core, don't you? I'm sorry, I just can't help it. Harry, it's so good to see you again, and you were so sweet to fly out with Tana. My pleasure. Congratulations. You're a lucky man. Yes, I am. I, I want you to know that I love your mother very much, and I'm going to take very good care of her. If you need anything, just... No, all I want is my mother to be happy. Why don't I show Harry the bar, huh? Give you two a moment. After all this time, I feel as if I am finally about to begin real life. I hope you're just not disappointed by it, Mom. Why don't you go take care of your other guests? I'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Yes. Good to see you, Tana. I wondered if you'd come. Don't be so uptight. It's your mother's wedding. Hell, oh, it's a romantic event. We had our own little romantic time. You know, for the record, I'm not young, I'm not scared, and I'm not quiet anymore. You're not going to intimidate me verbally. You're not going to mess with me physically. And I swear to God, if you ever try either, I'll personally nail your ass for five to ten. I will see to it that you never have to be in the same room with Billy ever again. It doesn't matter, Mom. I can handle him. It matters to me. It should have mattered when it counted when I first told you what he did. I did what I thought was best for you. By telling me to keep quiet? I was trying to protect you. But it made it worse, Mom. Donna, I was afraid. If I had allowed myself to accept what happened, I would never have been able to live with myself. No, what you mean is that you would not have been able to stay with Arthur. <sighs> Miss Roberts, you are very close to contempt. Your Honor, I am way beyond contempt. Counselor. It is just so reprehensible to me that the defense would make a motion to suppress evidence that they themselves introduced to the court. I will take your argument under advisement. In the meantime, I suggest you exercise a little restraint. One might think you're beginning to believe your own press. Court stands adjourned till tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. All rise. Yeah, looks like he read today's paper. No kidding. What was it they called you? Tough, merciless, brilliant. But uh, what I want to know is, you play baseball. So so? Why? Well, a couple guys in the office are putting a team together. Really? How good do you have to be? How good are you? I don't know. I haven't played in a long time. Well, tryouts are Saturday. You want to hit a few balls after work? Sure.
good. Oh, almost. <laughs> not bad, not bad. That's another one. All right. Ooh, close. That was very How many of these do I have to hit? You got a piece of that one. Well, start with one. Woo! Oh, yeah. yeah! Did you see that? Very nice. You know, there's another ball that's going to be coming in about two seconds. <laughs> well, gee, if my mother had only known, she could have dumped the ballet lessons and enrolled me in Little League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what my daughter did. She uh, she played shortstop, but uh, she kept the tutu. How old is she? Alex is six. And she just moved to Washington to be with a mother who landed this incredible job in the State Department. How long have you been divorced? Uh, we're, we're still working out the details, but uh, we've been separated for a, a while now. Listen, I have a confession to make. You don't have to worry about your batting average. <laughs> Why? Because you're not going to tell things. <laughs> <laughs> All you got to do is sign up. I lied. Um, because, because I have a fixation for hot dogs, and I thought if I told you about it, you might think I was strange. <laughs> You're right, I do. <laughs> you know, you're a lot more fun than you used to be. Really? I guess I hope so. <laughs> you know what we used to call you down at the office? No. What? The hammer. Oh. <laughs> Are you flirting with me, counselor? God, I hope so. Harry, it's me. Hey, look, I know it's New Year's and everything, but I... Someone there? Avril from the hospital? <laughs> well, I thought she didn't date clients. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah, right, of course. You're an ex-client. That would certainly make a difference. Uh... <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, hey, tell her I said hi, and uh, I just want to call and wish you a happy new year. All right, you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. This is Tana. Leave a message. Hi, it's Drew. Happy new year. Well, almost happy new year. We still got a couple of three hours to go. Uh, so, you jerk, you're out someplace having a great time. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm the only person in San Francisco under the age of 35 sitting at home. No, you're not. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Oh, I brought the perfect New Year's Eve video when Harry met Sally. Great, come on in. <laughs> All right. Wow, this place is great. Thanks. It's big and sprawling, multi-level. It's terrific. <laughs> it's kind of postmodern, right? Yeah. It's just like sparse but comfortable. Really tasteful. It's very, very you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. What? What? You actually know how to set the clock in your VCR. Mine uh, just flashes <laughs> continuously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got some uh, videos yesterday. Oh, great. Wow. The verdicts. Twelve angry men. Gandhi. Well, so this is your idea of light holiday fare. <laughs> yeah. Do you want some champagne? Please. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, I'm glad you called. Yeah, me too. 
I'm sorry it was so last minute. Oh, no. Spontaneous. I, I like that. Yeah, you know, I've never known what to do about New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such an awkward holiday, you know. Oh, it's the worst. That kiss thing at midnight? Yeah, especially when it's your first date. And, oh, and you're with uh, a dozen other couples at a dinner club. They've been together forever. <laughs> and they know how to kiss in public, even if they've stopped doing it in private. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was just for practice. <laughs> Getting the hang of this. Yeah, me too. Okay, I know it's early, but it's important. It's a shopping question. Yeah. Okay, Alex turned seven in three days, and I don't know what to get her. Now, I was totally there for six. I had that down. But a seven this or this? What do you think? Um, well, the car is great. Um, but, wow, so is the doll. Uh... Well, I promised Eileen I'd only get Alex one gift. She says I spoil her, which is true. But, I mean, who wouldn't, right? Um, okay, let's see. Buy the doll a bright yellow jumpsuit with a helmet. Put everything in one box and tell your wife it's a ballerina slash race car driver with her own car. Oh, perfect. Uh, but what about the... Oh, definitely leave the... The tutu. Tutu, yeah. <laughs> Shopping problem solved. <laughs> cute PJs. Well, they're comfortable, practical. And cute. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they're sexy. You were just saying that. Mm -mm. <laughs> sexy? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, then I have a whole drawer for you. <laughs> I mean, even though it means I'll have to drive over the bridge to work, I don't care. The place is incredible. I can't wait for you to see it. No, me neither. That's probably the counter offer. No, actually, it's me. Can I use your phone? Absolutely. Well, since I'm not plugged into anything, I'll get the cake. Thank you so much for bringing one. Oh, no, we wanted to. You did everything else. She's really great, you know. Yeah. I've been meaning to thank you for some time now. For what? Well, if you hadn't turned me down, Avril and I never would have gotten together in the first place. Hmm. Lucky break, huh? Well, sometimes things work out the way they're supposed to. Yeah. I asked her to marry me. Wow. <laughs> and I thought the house was a big commitment. What did she say? Well, she said that my timing's perfect. Because uh, we're pregnant. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the house, the baby, the marriage. That's wonderful. Not in the right order, oh. but you know. Who cares? <laughs> wow. Okay. Make a wish. Ready? Yeah. Kind of a tradition. Harry helps mm -hmm. me fill the candles. At least she doesn't have enough hot air. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh I'm ah. sorry. <laughs> <You do laughs> that, that me? Every year. Okay. <sighs> Listen, I uh, hate to bust up the party, but I gotta get back to the office. Oh, okay. You can't stay for cake? No, I'd love to, but I gotta get back and uh, look at some depositions that came right before I left. I'll catch you guys later. Okay, see, see you later. Big piece, little piece? Um, I want. It's not your big thing. <laughs> so, this is the guy who's supposed to be so devoted to you? Uh, well, what can I say? We're both workaholics. 
You're so used to being alone that it doesn't even seem strange to you that your boyfriend would leave your birthday party early? Harry. I mean, what kind of relationship is that? It's what I want, Harry. I'm in love with him. shouldn't be doing this. You want to stop? Look, there's nothing to feel guilty about. I'm still your wife. Mm. Mm. So, are you nervous? No. <laughs> Oh, come on. Every groom's nervous. Not me. I'm nervous. It's not even my wedding. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Oh, hey. Beautiful. Thank you. So handsome. Hello. <laughs> you haven't changed your mind, right? No, I do. Yeah, no. <laughs> you two really don't have any doubts, do you? Are you kidding? Of course we do. It's just sometimes you have to jump off the bridge and build your wings on the way down. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God to witness and bless the joining together of Harry and Avril in the bond and covenant of holy matrimony. Harry, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Yes. Avril, will you have this man to be your husband? To live together in the covenant of marriage. Definitely. There is no greater happiness than loving and being loved. I know how true that is because of you. And I will love you forever. So you make me laugh. And you let me cry and keep me safe. And I will love you always. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Dear friends, please greet Mr. and Mrs. Harrison Winslow IV. Um, I got linguine, I hope that's okay. She makes me so crazy. You know, she's the one who left me, who wanted time off from the marriage. I know. You know, now that Washington didn't work out the way she thought, she didn't know what she wants. You know what I want? What? Settle it, get the divorce. <laughs> Why, so we can get married, I can screw up your life? What makes you think you'd screw things up? Did I miss something here? No, it's just sometimes people start out wanting one thing and end up wanting something else. Look, just because your best friend got married, don't go and get all romantic about the secret of life being marriage and kids. But what's wrong with that? Well, because that's not what we're about, Tana. What exactly are we about, then? Taste the sauce. It's too much garlic. Okay, you're really throwing me here. 
Anna, I love you. Isn't that enough? I'll be right back. Well, wait, where are you going? Got any quarters? Never mind. Sorry it took me so long. Oh, God, where did I put it? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> Answered your phone. Drew? We gotta talk. I'll call you later. It's Drew. I need to talk to you. Call me, please. You can't keep avoiding me, Tana. We need to deal with this, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't know how hard it is. I love you. I do. The problem is... I love her, too. I love you both. Drew's a jerk? You're kidding me. Huh? It's such a surprise. At least you were smart enough to get out. But next time, maybe you want to try a little commitment. Ugh. Look, your career is important, but I'm telling you, marriage and kids is the greatest thing going. Why can't you be one of those types of friends that just nods his head, says, uh-huh, and agrees with me? Why do you always push me to do better? Can't you let me swallow in my self-pity for a little while? Excuse me, sweet guy. Because you can do better. Okay, Harry. Okay. Promise me you won't wallow long. Okay, I promise. Good. <laughs> hey, good. Harry tell you that I'm being considered for a seat on the bench at the criminal court. It's a long shot. Maybe the youngest presiding judge, not to mention the fact that there are only two of them. I'm sorry. So what is it? What's wrong? Why aren't you asking Harry? Ask him what? God, Donna, you're so wrapped up in your work that you can't see what's going on. What do you mean? Just take a good look at him. And then you tell I wish you could have been there when he was born. He would have loved it. I mean, from a purely philosophical viewpoint, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's amazing being born. It's just this incredible struggle. Like screaming and kicking, pushing. What do you think? You think it's the same when you die? Or do you just 
slip over to the other side. No. Look, it was just a hypothetical question. You don't have to look so worried. Well, I, actually, I am a little worried. Are you okay, Harry? Look at me. I am the picture of health. Don't screw around with me. If you're sick, Harry, I want to know about it. Okay, I'm sick. I have a complication from the paralysis. How sick? I'm serious, Harry. Well, my doctor made it sound like my best course of action would be to head straight for kidney failure. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Don't be flip about it. A long time ago, you held my hand and it got me through the worst night of my life. I'm going to need you to do it again. Harry. He's about the same. Thank you for asking. Drew. Yeah? I'm being fired. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I've been in Marin County all day taking depositions, and Bonner left a message on my voicemail. Okay, did he say you were fired? I mean, did he use those exact words? He said that I am out of a job. I mean, they can't do this to me. You know, this is my whole life here. You're not being fired. Well, you're being offered a seat on the bench. It was all over the office by noon. You're kidding me. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, no. Sorry. Congratulations. You always said you were good. I am not thinking straight. Donna, I love you. Now, I swear I can work everything out. Yeah, well, I swore I'd never do anything like this again. Donna, I know you still love me. Just give me a little more time. You've already spent a year and a half on a six-month divorce. How much more do you need? Donna, please. Donna. No. This isn't what I want anymore. It's not enough. Over the next few months, Harry got weaker. He wrote letters, scribbled notes and instructions, extracted promises from all of us. No can Harry help. At first, Avril resisted. It was as if she felt that each of these promises brought them one step closer to the inevitability they would have to face together. He never worried about himself, only about the ones he was leaving behind. Yeah. <laughs> I take my eyes off him. 
Harry made me promise to take him trout fishing. Yeah, me too. I met somebody. I'm getting married next month. <laughs> well, I'm very happy for you. Harry didn't want to have a funeral. He said if I had one, he wouldn't come. <laughs> but he wanted me to read this. Even the death of friends will inspire us as much as their lives. Their memories will be encrusted in our thoughts as monuments of other men are overgrown with moss. For our friends have no place in the graveyard. solemnly swear that you will administer justice without regard to person and give equal right to the poor and to the rich and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform the duties incumbent upon you as a judge under the Constitution and laws of the United States so help you God I do solemnly swear congratulations thank you <laughs> Is he the same Judge Carver that I read about in the New York Times? Yes, he is. Can't wait to tell Arthur. <laughs> well, he probably had to pay parking tickets downstairs and somebody recruited him. <laughs> well, that's not exactly how it happened. Actually, I came down as a favor to a friend, Harry Winslow. You knew Harry? Oh, yeah, back at Harvard. Harry was one of my more challenging students, but an awful lot of fun. Harry told me that if you got the appointment, I should call Judge Carver to give you the oath. He's still trying to impress you, Tana. Well, it worked. Thank you so much for making my appointment even more special. You're welcome. Thank Goodbye. You. Good luck. Thanks. Oh, I'm going to need it. I take the bench on Monday, and I'm so nervous. Well, sometimes you just got to jump off that bridge and build your wings on the way down. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. I'll see you later. Avril looks well. Yeah, she's a very strong woman. Harry was wrong to worry about her. She's a little mad at him right now, but I guess that's all part of the process. How about you? Oh, well, it's been four months, and I still pick up the phone to call him. Well, there are some things that people never get over. Yeah, it's probably true. Tana, would you mind terribly driving me to my hotel? Oh, I really wish that you would have told me that you were flying out by yourself. You could have stayed with me. I didn't think that we... Mom, would you like to stay at my place? It's been a very long time since you and I spent the night under the same roof. Mom, you're the only family I have left now, okay? But don't think that means I'll be rushing back to New York every Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> 
Arthur's daughter, her third husband, their three little brats, and Billy are all coming this year. I don't want to be there for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Oh, but, um, this is my courtroom. I see. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. I am so proud of you. I know you are. Oh, Mom. I love you. Police officer clearly and by his own admission violated the Fourth Amendment rights of the defendant. Counselor? I realize the Fourth Amendment has been under attack lately, but as long as I am a judge sworn to uphold the laws of the state and constitution, I will follow the law. The evidence will be suppressed. This case is continued until Monday at 9. The next matter in this court is the government versus Yale McBee. Prior to hearing your motions, I would like to say there's a situation that could affect my judgment in this case. And although I believe I could make a fair and impartial decision in order to avoid the appearance of any impropriety, I recuse myself from this case. My clerk will reassign this. All rise. So this is what I've condemned you to. What a pleasant surprise. I saw you in court. I was in town for a couple of days. I wanted to stop by and see how you were doing. Nice to see you. Please, uh, have a seat. Thanks. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Well, it's not often you see a judge recuse herself from such a high-profile case. Is not Yale McBee accused of planning a bomb at the foreign consulate? Yes, he is. I knew him in college, actually. <laughs> a friend of yours? Mm, believe it or not, he was, yes. <laughs> My, you have come a long way. <laughs> I was just thinking that myself. <sighs> That's a great photo of you and Harry. Oh, thanks. <sighs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> mm. <sighs> I know it's last minute, but do you have any dinner plans? Oh, actually, my plan was to work straight through dinner and pick up something later. I... Oh, I didn't mean to impose. Oh, no, no, not at all. I'd, I'd love to have dinner with you. Great. Great. We had dinner together that night, and the next, and the next. We talked about everything, our work, our lives, Harry. Thank you. I even tried to explain my mother to him. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mm. this is for you. Oh, no, it's very unexpected. Just a little something. Okay. It's a teleco fly. Wow, I've only seen these in catalogs. Do you fish? I just started last year. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. I love sports, so golf and tennis mostly. Huh? Just don't ask me to play any baseball. Uh, right? Believe me, I won't. <laughs> There's something about fly fishing, though. It's it's very um, zen. zen. <laughs> yeah. How about singing? Only in the shower, and very bad. <laughs> I can't carry a tune. <laughs> My ex-wife was in a choral group. Oh. I wonder you never married again. Exactly. 
What about you? Oh, it's complicated, I guess. We've got all evening. Okay, well... I, um, I never married because it's exactly what my mother wanted me to do. And uh, what's really weird is I tried so hard not to be like her and I ended up making all the same mistakes that she did, but for completely different reasons. You don't seem like a person who makes many mistakes. You've got a terrific career. Yeah, I do, but... For a while, that's all I had. The thing is, it, it all counts, you know? Every year, every day, every relationship. It's a little like fly fishing. Sometimes you can't see the obvious till you break clear of the surface. <sighs> that's exactly what Harry would say. full circle now, on a road paved with forgiveness, past my mother's dreams to my own. Life is full of risks, Harry always knew that. Sometimes I feel like I'm taking the chance of a lifetime, trying to manage work, marriage, and family. But I'm blessed with a man who loves me, and with a daughter who happily refuses to take any kind of lessons at all.